there is such this dynamic right now where we have trillions of dollars in infrastructure at stake. This is gonna be resolved, folks. Like, it's not gonna be completely resolved by the end of July, but it's gonna be, we're gonna have a like a 75% uh, understanding of whether we're gonna spend six, five, four, three trillion dollars on stuff that like, we couldn't even imagine, we could imagine, but this is going to be, this is a serious, like, like monumental turn in our politics. And it's just like a bunch of guys, essentially, there's some women, but it's mostly guys who are sitting around just like, eh, you know, it's like, where are we going to go to dinner tonight? Yeah. I don't know. You know, Jimmy always likes to go to these, the Italian place and I don't like and meanwhile, like the rest of the body politic doesn't seem to be sort of engaged in this. It's just so bizarre. And here's Romney sort of saying like... One of the people who's in this dinner decision-making yeah. process. And he's just going like, yeah, like it's all for us. We're just going to figure out what we're going to go to eat tonight. Here he is on uh, Jake Tapper's uh, State of the Union over the weekend. He, of course, it. kept pushing last night again uh, the big lie that the 2020 election was rigged. Uh, this all comes as Arizona Republicans are completing their ridiculous partisan audit. Other states are considering doing the same. Even former Attorney General Bill Barr called it all in an interview in The Atlantic magazine, and you'll pardon my French, bullshit. That's a quote from the Attorney General, former Attorney General. Uh, do these repeated lies about the election, the whitewashing of what happened January 6th, do you think it undermines American democracy? And if so, do you think that more of your Republican colleagues need to speak out? Well, I do think it's important uh, for each person to uh, to speak the truth and to make clear uh, that the big lie is exactly that. I can tell you that that it is surely being used around the world uh, to minimize the uh, uh, the support for democracy. I mean, there is a battle going on in the world right now between the autocratic nations like China and Russia and nations that believe in democracy. And if, uh, if the autocratic nations can point to the United States, which is the, the birthplace, really, of this modern democracy, and, and can say, look, they can't even run an election there that's not fraudulent. How can you possibly run it in your country? That obviously is, is, is having an impact on, on the cause of democracy and freedom around the world. But I also think, uh, frankly, Jake, that here in the U.S., there's a growing recognition that this is a bit like WWF, uh, that it's entertaining, uh, but it's not real. And I know people want to say, yeah, they believe in the big lie in some cases, but I think people recognize that it's a lot of show and and um, and bombast, but it's going nowhere. Uh, the election is over. Uh, it was uh, it was fair. Uh, look, uh, the, the president was saying it was crying foul on election night and actually before election night. And the question is, what were his sources of information? Where did he hear that the election had been fraudulently uh, carried out? Did he hear it from the Justice Department? No. Did he hear it from the intelligence community? No. So where did he hear it from? The My Pillow guy? Rudy Giuliani? Yep. What were their sources of information? I mean, it's pretty clear the election was fair. Uh, it wasn't the outcome that the president wanted, but let's move on. So it's, it's like the World Wildlife Fund, I guess. He, no, he, wrestling. I know. I know. But, but he's saying that, like, it's endangering our, you know, standing in the world, et cetera, et cetera. But it's also just sort of fake. And he's like saying, like, you know, there's an increasing awareness. Really? Among whom? Like, and, 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 like, you've got a full party that is going on, going on. And, and, and just to be clear, this is a guy who went and kissed the ring in the 2012 election from uh, Donald Trump, who went out to dinner with him as an attempt to get, I don't know, Secretary of State. In other words, he created this as much as anybody. The whole Republican Party did. And he's now trying to make it seem like eh, nobody's buying into it. Are you out of your mind? But, th but this is exactly how he views politics. Nobody in his small circle exactly. in Washington exactly. is buying it. It's just like a game that we're playing. It's like WWE is that what he meant. Like it's wrestling. Everyone's playing pretend. Except for the consequences of that game of pretend that you and other elite senators are playing or your friends, your other Republican colleagues that you kind of want to to uh, downplay their complicity in. And then there were actually deaths involved in this. There was a storming of the Capitol. There are continued 
uh, QAnon light type conventions where people believe that there's going to be a coup that's necessary to bring Donald Trump back in office in August. I mean, there are no, it's not a game. It's the opposite of a game. And but even beyond that, the the structure of everything that created Donald Trump is still intact. It yeah. wasn't the my pillow guy and it wasn't Rudy Giuliani. It was the fact that the ultimate winner of the nomination in 2012 went to go kiss Donald Trump's hand, hand to get uh, an okay to run for president. And they're still doing it. We just don't know exactly which one of those people, but the, it's all, none of it's changed. And he's just diminishing uh, his role in it. And the people who, who are around him, I, I, it's just, I, I don't know. I think that like, you know, there is such a desire too for the media to sort of pretend like, oh, this is a, a flash in the pan, as opposed to there is a structural issue with the Republican Party that well, produces this type, type of stuff. We knew that that there, there was always that tendency. I mean, that's why Tapper's bringing him on and saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, where was he getting this information from? The My Pillow guy? Okay, how many more months are we going to do this where we're making fun of Mike Lindell and like laughing it off, as opposed to examining the structural issues the republican project that led to this very moment that we're in and that's going to persist and that they're making sure is cemented in legislation on the state level and that the democrats aren't pushing back on on the federal level i mean the project is ongoing even if the orange man isn't on tv and calling you guys liars and enemies of the people i mean that really is primarily what the media seem to have been concerned with yeah. now that it's gone and the wounds healed a little bit okay now we're back to pretending like mitt romney isn't as complicit as any, anybody in, exactly. the, in in this creation and i will say we can also uh, just to be fair we can still make fun of mike lindell and do everything you're saying we exactly and we can do both. right well i mean we have to it's not an either or i i uh, I, I'm, I swear i would never want to stop making fun of mike lindell. it's important yeah <laughs> Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.